Hey, hey, what's going on? It is so good to see you. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, my name is Richard. I am currently a senior at UCLA and I'm also an entrepreneur. And I have a very special video for you today. A couple weeks ago, I posted a video on me speaking at a Toastmasters event and sharing a little bit about my faith. And that video is gonna be right there if you haven't seen it. I highly encourage you to watch that first and then come back to this one. But in light of that one, that had a pretty good response. It seems like you enjoyed that. So I wanted to make a similar video. This one is going to give you two actionable steps on how you can improve upon any area of your life if you feel you're discontent, you're unsatisfied, and there's just something missing. And that could be in the area of your health, your school, your academics, your business, any kind of relationship that you might be in. This is a more general video, but I promise you, you're gonna get lots of value from it, but you gotta watch it to the very end. The two steps that are super actionable, let's see if you can catch them, are found throughout the video. So I hope you enjoy this, put a lot of effort into preparing for it, so I hope you enjoy. So many of you know me for being a morning person. I think I've mentioned before that I typically wake up between the time of 3.30 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. And I would highly discourage you from doing this from waking up at such an ungodly hour. But I do so because I have to for work. But it wasn't always like this. Just going back a couple years, actually, just to high school, I remember that I actually used to dread waking up in the morning. And I can specifically remember when I was a junior in high school, it was the first year that I got a smartphone. My dad bought me one as a gift going into that school year. And every single day, I'm not sure if you can relate to this, but I would always set my alarm in the morning so I can maximize every single minute of sleep. So I could wake up as late as possible while still getting to school on time. Can anyone relate to that? Right, I think that we're all guilty of doing that. And so I would always set my alarm for 6 a.m. That was the latest I could do before I could still eat breakfast. I could still have some time to shower, do a little bit of homework, and then get off to class. But there's one thing that always start off, started my day off on a really uncomfortable, frustrating note, and it was my alarm. Have you guys ever heard that alarm that just goes, <coughs> that's super, super frustrating. So when I got my alarm from, when I got my smartphone from my dad, there was this default alarm on there, and I'd never changed it, I just would always set my alarm. And so for months on end, I think it was three months, every single morning at 6 a.m. that <coughs> would happen, and I would wake up in this fluster, like my, my heart rate would go up, my blood pressure would go up, I might have a little bit of a, a, a sweat, a cold sweat. And I just, the first 20 minutes of my day or so would always kind of be rushed and anxious. And it just wasn't very pleasant waking up to the sound of that alarm. But I never really did any about it, anything about it. I never really thought, thought about it. And so every single night, I would know, oh my gosh, in the morning I'm gonna have to wake up to, not the default alarm, that's, that's the title on the smartphone, I like to call it the, the alarm of loud noises and death. So that's what I like to call that. Now, that winter break, my family went on a trip to Hawaii. It was the first time we'd ever gone to Hawaii, and we got this really nice rental, rental home. My parents stayed at the master bedroom, and then my older sister and I, we shared this uh, one bedroom that we had. And there was one morning where my parents said, hey, we're gonna have to go on a hike tomorrow morning, and it's gonna be pretty early, so make sure to set your alarm right. And that night, my sister and I were just about to crash, and she said, hey Richard, no worries on your phone, I'll set the alarm on my phone. And so I thought to myself, cool. So I turned off my phone, and I didn't worry about it anymore. This is the cool part. In the morning when I woke up, I woke, I woke up to the sound of oceans crashing. I woke up to the sound of birds chirping, this beautiful, beautiful melody. I thought, oh my gosh, is this how everyone in Hawaii wakes up? Is it because I'm in Hawaii? Mm -hmm. No, it was actually, it took me a few minutes to realize, but it was actually just the alarm on my sister's phone. <laughs> it was just this super soothing, harmonious melody. And that morning when I was having breakfast with my sister, I was telling her about how her name's Cheryl. I said, Cheryl, I feel so stupid. For the past three months, I've had this super frustrating sound of death alarm, and I've woken up every morning with anxiety and frustration because I have to hear this alarm. Yet, you had this beautiful alarm, and she laughed. She said, Richard, it's because you have the default setting, you stupid. You see, on the settings, when you go into the settings of your smartphone, there's like 20 different ringtones on there. You can just choose one, and it doesn't have to be the default. And what made me feel even more frustrated was we had the same freaking phone. Mom and Dad gave us both the same phone. <laughs> But how much more so is it that in our own lives, 
We choose the default settings in which we accept the frustration. The different parts of our life, I know there's something within your life that is frustrating, that irritates you, but we just haven't made the changes because we accept the fact that it's a default, that's been handed to us. And so if there is gonna be a title to speech today, if you have paper and pen, write this down. The title is, I refuse to default. I refuse to default. Because I know that in every single person in this room, there's something, some kind of relationship that you know is toxic, that you know is not good for you, that you've been in for too long, but you just accept, it's my default. It's what I've been comfortable with. There's somebody in this room that is not prioritizing their health, and they blame it, it's my family history. My dad had diabetes, my grandparents had it, blood pressure runs in the family. This is just something that's part of my health and I accept it, it's just who I am. Somebody in this room did great in high school, got into UCLA, and then started getting really bad grades because classes got tough and they started accepting. This is just my default. I'm just not good at school anymore. Everyone here at the school is too smart. Somebody in this room needs to hear and I don't know who it is. I refuse to default. So in the next few minutes of this talk, I just, want to, I just want to show you these two simple tactics, two simple steps that can help you get out of whatever that unhealthy default is. If you want to hear, say yes. 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 If you want to hear, say yes. yes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, here we go. Step number one of two, super simple, is you have to have awareness. Write that down. Awareness. You are in full control of your settings. Oftentimes, I get it. We all have circumstances within our lives that are suboptimal. I get it. Maybe it's not a great relationship with your parents. Maybe your dad is a dick. I get it. Those are things that we can't change. My physical body, your physical body, yeah, we're born with it. God made it that way. There's nothing we can do about my bones, my, my, my hip size. There's nothing I can do about that. Yes, those are certain things, but here's the thing. Your circumstances do not dictate you. You, di you dictate your circumstances. You have full control over the control panel of how your cir circumstances operate. It's not the circumstances that dictate your life. So if no one has ever told you this before, let me be the first one to tell you. You are in full control of your circumstances. You are. In the same way that I had no idea that I could go into the settings of my freaking phone and change the default sound to a much softer sound, you have full control over that. Number two, somebody say step two. Step, step two. two. Somebody say step two. Step, step two. two. The second step is, what is the second step? <laughs> I'm just kidding. The second step is you have to take action. The purpose of this talk is not to motivate you. It's not to get those goosebumps on your arm and that heart rate inside you elevated and think, oh my gosh, Richard is so motivating. That's not the point. The point is to get you to do something because if you understand from your awareness of what I just identified, that yes, there is something in your life that you're not happy with your academics, your health, your fitness, your relationships, your career, whatever it is, yes, you're not, ha um, you're, you're not happy with it, but that's not enough. You have to make a change. Can I share something with you? Yes. When I was a freshman and sophomore, I really, really did not want to be a doctor. I really didn't. I had a passion for it, but when I discovered entrepreneurship, this burning passion in my heart started pushing me towards entrepreneurship. But my parents, they came from a background of, of, of engineers. They valued higher level education. You gotta get your MD. You gotta invest more money, more time. By the time you're 28 years old, you're gonna have a stable career for the rest of your life. But there was this burning dream in my heart that I wanted to start a multi-million dollar business. I wanted to impact thousands of lives, my customers. I wanted to donate millions of dollars to charities, fund churches. And if in my faith, the certain things that are said about it, in Philippians 4, 3, verse in the Bible, it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to, for, to, plans to prosper you and not to forsake you, plans for hope in the future. If that's what my God tells me, and I have this burning desire in my heart, why then am I subjecting myself to these circumstances? Why then am I not willing to drop this pre-med thing? Because it's what my friends say. Because as my parents said, it's a stable job. You're good at science. You're good at math. Why did I accept my default? You see, when I finally dropped and I said, I refuse my default settings, I'm gonna go into my control panel, I'm gonna change it up. 
Everything in my life started opening up. Businesses, business opportunities, mentors, amazing fulfilling experiences within my career. I now have a YouTube channel centered around entrepreneurship in which I get to serve my audience and put out inspirational content. None of that would have happened if I did not take action to change my default settings. I don't know who it is in this room, but somebody needs to hear this. I don't know what it is in your life. I'm sure any, every, any person in this room today can relate to that one thing that they're just not happy with, but they've been compromising on that default setting. So let me tell you this. We've all been blessed with this privilege. Yes, I said privilege to experience this book of life. And we've all been given a pen. But it just so happens that the default settings within our lives, the circumstances that have been planted within our lives that are suboptimal, in those circumstances, people have taken that pen away from you. Negative experiences, negative relationships, bad histories, they've taken that pen away from you. And they've stripped you of your ability to write your story. So take that back, take back that pen and start writing your own story. Mr. Toastmaster. Hey, so what did you think? I hope you got lots of value from that one. I definitely had a really enjoyable time speaking on that topic. So I wanted to also let you know of a business opportunity. If you're a university student in US or Canada, I have two business colleagues, Wayne Sutherland and also Cliff Brooks. And both of these entrepreneurs have fitness businesses that do twenty to $30,000 a month every single year. So they're around the $300,000 a year business mark and they're location independent and financially free. And this is the cool part. They are looking for people to mentor. So if you wanna be mentored by these individuals, they're both highly successful. They're looking for interns to come on, work for free, give value and learn from them in the same way that I gave value to my mentor, Vince Delmani, go ahead and go down to the description below. There's applications directly for those entrepreneurs. And if you haven't joined the Facebook group, High Performance Students, you gotta do that first because there's a letter in there that lists out all the steps of what exactly this mentorship program is. And in light of Thanksgiving that just happened, I just wanted to let you know that I'm extremely, extremely thankful for you. I'm humbled and I'm honored to be able to make videos that can serve you. I'm grateful that I can provide you with opportunities for mentorship with successful entrepreneurs. So join the Facebook group down below, read the letter that I wrote for you, follow the instructions of how to apply, and Wayne Sutherland and Cliff Brooks are both waiting to meet one of you, hopefully as one of their mentees. So until next time, stay sharp, stay focused, and I'll see you later.